All right, today we are going to go into some Pokemon investment information, and today is going to be the kickoff of a new series that I'm working on with some content creators to kind of break down and go in depth. What does it take to be a Pokemon investor? And this is not just going to be an overall open-ended deal. This is going to be a very niche down series where we are going to take a look at certain individuals in each one of the Pokemon era areas to maybe give you an idea of how you may want to go, whether or not you want to become a sealed product collector, a graded card collector, whether you want to go and start your own LGS or your at-home business. This is going to be a great opportunity for you guys to be able to see and jump in on this and actually partake. This will not be done live. This will be done pre-recorded so that way we can stay on track and be sure that we cover the information as best as we can so that we can give a good proposal or information to you guys as we move forward. So guys, if you're new here, hit that subscribe, hit that notify, and as always, hit that like button. We can get 85 likes in this video. It's greatly appreciated. Helps us out a ton. And of course, it's free for you. So first but not last but not least, the one thing I want to talk about is, is that I do have a great gathering of people that want to do this with me and i will thank them right now i have put more messages out to some more people and i'm waiting for replies so i will not put their name on this video but i will try and tell you who the next person is on deck so that you can actually see who you want to be with or who you want to watch and really get information from so first of all the people that we do have for sure that have agreed to do this is going to be dan from catch em all collectibles we got mason from cardinal gaming we also are going to go into retro and followed up by Pokemon DNA. Those are the first four that I have signed up for sure. And then I've also got some questions out to some other people to see if they're willing to join also. So hopefully we can get a good grouping of different individuals, but we're going to get a good spectrum of what's happening here when it comes down to Pokemon investing and help you maybe make decisions on what's going to be best for you. So first of all, I always like leading by example. So I'm going to go first in just my own little interview, kind of an introduction of me in this series, and also maybe a little bit more of a breakdown for what I am, where I'm at, where am I at right now in the Pokemon TCG. The nice thing about this series is, is if we want to redo this in a year or two down the road with the same individuals, we can because things are always in flux and changing. We may go different directions. We may shift one way or another. You know, people may open or close stores. People might expand their businesses to more online sales. I mean, there's things that can always be changing in our own own genre of where we're at. And we could change our niches a little bit to expand into different areas. So I want to start out right, right now and I'm going to go into, you know, what do you currently do or do before I got into the Pokemon TCG? Well, I have been a HVAC technician since about the age of eight I started working with my father. He owns his own business. He owns his HVAC business for since 1982. And I started working for him when I was eight years old. I went to trade school. I learned the trade. I got all my certifications. I've done all the training. I continually do training to improve myself on my field. And I try to be one of the top professionals in my area, that one that's reputable and people can find me and understand that I am going to do the best job that I can. The second thing I did in college, because I always believe that there's good thing in diversity, is I became a machinist. I did that for eight years in Colorado. I was a mold maker for an injection molding company just to get away from the HVAC business. I do enjoy machining. I do enjoy doing that kind of that that type of work. So I always find it a lot of fun to continually even stay up with it. I am always learning new programming. I'm always learning new machinery as it comes out just to stay on the edge of it. I don't do much of it anymore in the current situation that I'm in, but I am planning on trying to get maybe some equipment in the near future to be able to start expanding a little bit onto that, even for our farm work itself, being able to partake in that. So that's realistically what I'm what I've done beforehand. I do the farming. Um, we have family farm, of course, and we all pitch in on that. We have our own side farm where we do produce and poultry and things like that. But that's basically a new startup for us on our small farm with my wife and I, and it's continuing expanding. Um, I got back into Pokemon just so you get an idea of what my time frame was for me joining into the Pokemon TCG. I joined back around in May of 2019. Um, I was out in the store with my son, Jacob, and he picked up a booster packs of unbroken bonds and we purchased them. We opened them. I instantly fell in love with it again because I had left in 2006. I had finally walked away from Pokemon when I was getting into my second year in college, starting my career and moving forward. 
I decided that I was going to leave Pokemon. I sold all my stuff and moved out, and I haven't come back until 2019. My first tournament, I looked it up on my calendar because I actually still do have it on my Google calendar. It was May 25th. I actually went back into the tournament world. I didn't do much with the investing at that point or even the collecting. I had just gotten back in and jumped right back into what I was doing beforehand, which was tournament play. I have been a tournament player a lot up until 2006. I did a lot of regional tournaments, even partaking in some of the big tournaments around the country, at least in the Midwest back in the day. So I have had some fun and enjoyment inside of that, and I went back to it and hit it hard and really had some fun the first probably four or five months of me being back in Pokemon TCG. Then I went and expanded and kind of moved forward into more things, and I started investing and collecting. I started going after those nostalgic things. I bought a case and some of Evolutions, uh, one of them sets that was really nostalgic for me and affordable. You know, you could buy them back then at $79 a box. I bought a bunch of them because I thought that this would be a really nostalgic set. And even if I sat on it for a long period of time and opened it, it would be a lot of fun. So I purchased a cast a case of Evo and we opened two of them with my son. Had some fun. I still got the third case is right behind me. I don't know if you can see it really well, but right behind me over here, there is the last case of the three loose ones that I have of Evo. And maybe one day we'll open it. It's just been a lot of fun to have that. And it's just kind of one of those nostalgic sets. Once again, not a big reprint fan set, but for the affordability, it was fun to get into it and show my son what we opened. Uh, my progression has been continuing now, going more into the investment side as we got into late 2019. I started buying more for the investment side. I saw Pokemon going in the upward direction, and I was taking some of my expendable money and slowly building more and more product, getting more things in hand, starting to buy Cosmic Eclipse by that point in time, Hidden Fates. A lot of these other products that, you know, I was starting to kind of stockpile a little bit because number one, I enjoyed them. And number two, I saw some maybe value in them in the future. And I'm always looking at the investment value in anything, whether it's training, whether it's schooling, whatever it is, there's always an investment value in something. And if you can start to see that and see those trends, you can definitely move forward. And my progression has always been moving in that forward direction. Um, as the boom hit, of course, I sold most of my stuff out. I really did clean out my closet and didn't leave as much behind as a lot of people may have. I took the full advantage of it to build my coffers up and really give me the buying power to purchase some of the better things. So, for example, I did buy a lot of Hidden Fates. I have purchased a lot of Dragon's Majesty. I have quite a bit from there. I've also purchased a lot of the premium collection boxes from back in Sun and Moon for Dragon's Majesty and for Hidden Fates um, at lower prices when they were available. And I've expanded on that since. So once again, it's kind of where I'm I'm tending to go to is more of the older sets. But I do like Sword and Shield. Sword and Shield has some great opportunity. I think that there is a lot of value in this set. It's just a matter of patience. As sets get older, you can see the direction they're going and the speed they are going. And it gives me that direction for what I want to purchase right now. Next thing I want to talk about is, is you know, what what's the length of time that I've been in a hobby? Well, so far, as you know, I am an OG. I started back in 2009, 1999, not 2019, 1999, all the way until 2006. But I was heavily a tournament player and did do some investing even back then. I would save booster boxes and put them away in my shelf thinking that they would be valuable in the future. So I did have quite a few of the, you know, base set unlimited jungle fossil fossil, even through Neo. I tried to keep one of every booster box back then, but in 2006, I decided to just kind of move on and I needed the money for college expenses. I needed a new vehicle and I was having some tooling things I had to purchase for myself, which were getting pretty expensive for me on a low income job at the time and so thus i started selling them i found one of my friends and he still has them all my booster boxes i sold them to him he has dad owned an lgs and they kept them they, they actually held on to them and i'm really impressed that they do still have my boxes that i had back in 2006 still there but they're not going to sell them to me for what i sold them to them for i can guarantee that um what's the first what is what was the final deciding factor to get me to start to focus on what i'm doing so primarily I focus on raw cards. Um, my biggest focus is on raw cards and then on sealed product. Um, I enjoy both of them. I enjoy raw cards. I enjoy trying to, I did enjoy trying to do grading even back in 2006 when I had to go to my local LGS, LCS and have them 
send them out for me and then wait for them to come back and go pick them back up at my LCS. I, I do enjoy grading. I think that there's some great opportunities in the grading market. Um, I don't do a lot with it, but I do a lot with the raw two graded and then sell the graded cards and haven't gotten back into it much just because of the factors with PSA. I've been stockpiling. I have a whole stockpile of raw singles that are sitting here that I definitely want to get out for grading or at least reevaluate them to see if there's any value in sending those for grading right now. Once again, I still waiting for grading to go back down under $20 continuously around that 15 is where I'm hoping to see before a lot of these cards would leave. But overall, my focus has been in the sealed product just because to me, it's a little bit simpler to determine whether or not a sealed product will be valuable and move that forward to know where to sell it. If you get good connections and you get good people involved, you know where to sell things at a really good rate. Um, I have some friends that sometimes I hold some of the product. They know I do it. I purchase product up front and I'll hold it till it gets a little bit more scarce and they're in tournament play or they're in collectors themselves and then they'll purchase it for a little bit higher price when the value goes up. So once again, I talk about having outs and that's one of those situations. Um, estimated hours work to income per month. So I put this question in because I think it's a really good assessment for what's going on and how you're doing things. Um, for me right now, it depends very much depending on what's happening in my other businesses. If the HVAC business is incredibly busy and our farm is incredibly, incredibly busy, which can happen in the spring and the fall, I will completely dip out of selling Pokemon products. So then I don't, of course, have any income in those points. But there are points in the year, like in the winter, sometimes you know between January, February, March, where I can hit it really heavily. So I can put in, you know, 15, 20 hours and come out with somewhere around 900 to a thousand dollars in that time frame. And these are all relative guys. I'm not going to give exact numbers and I'm not going to ask anybody on this that comes on this channel for exact numbers. It's all relative so that you guys can feel where you could actually be and how many hours you can roughly work and, and see what you can get for income on this. So everybody's answer may be different. Um, for me, a lot of times it's a lot of catch up because I don't continuously sell things on like eBay. And if you if they have algorithms even there. So if people search things on eBay, a lot of times your sales won't come up as much because you don't sell as much. You need to be consistently selling in order to get to the top of the search lists. I don't do that. So I do know that that hampers my sales overall. And if I were to stay more consistent, even during the busy times, I would probably be a little bit better off. But Relatively, if I can work 15 to 20 hours, I can do close to $1,000 myself um, in income or profit. And if I'm like now in the busy season of my heating work, I'll be doing five to six, uh, five to six hours and I'll be getting probably a couple hundred dollars right at that range. So just to give you what a throughput looks like on this end for the amount of hours work to the amount of income gained. Um, one mistake that I would advise you to avoid. Now, this is a big question. I think that this is great to hear from other people, which is a very important aspect when it comes down to the po to joining any kind of investment or business or any kind of part like that. And the biggest thing that I would tell you to avoid is niche down really, really quickly. Um, biggest mistake that everybody makes, and even I did myself when I got back into it, was I tended to buy everything and you don't really niche down. You buy sealed, you buy raw, you're buying graded. You're trying to take raw and grade and you're, you're expanding into this really big realm of things. And it makes it very difficult for you to really focus and get good at something. And when you get good at something, then you expand and become better at it. And you know, funny thing is, is no matter how many times you start a business or run a business or do things with a business, you tend to accidentally do that every time. The more you can hyper focus on something and become good at it, better at it, the faster that you will accelerate and become become known for it. And when you become known for it, then, of course, you can move forward in the right direction. Uh, number one, most important thing that I consider when selling and trading Pokemon cards. Number one thing I would say is networking. Uh, definitely network with people, community, definitely work with uh, communicating, communicating with networking out. Uh, the more people that you know as you grow in this hobby, the more people that you get in connection with, the more opportunities you have to sell things directly to someone. Um, the more that I can directly sell to someone and gets me off a TCG player, the better chances that I have of making a little bit more money than paying them high fees that are on eBay and TCG player. I would love to go to more Collecticons. I would love to go to more 
Pokemon tournaments with some of my raw cards. I feel that I could be able to make a decent kind of income by finding these in collections as people go out, taking them to these tournaments and be able to get people, players, cards that they that they want. And that's the biggest thing is, is that I would say is the number one thing that if you're going to get into anything in the Pokemon TCG, I, I feel for anything I do, networking has been key and communicating with people to really grow grow that communication and networking skills. Uh, next question I have on here is knowing what you do now, would you still focus on sealed product and raw cards or would you change? And I think this is an important question because a lot of times things do change and we will change in the hobby. You know, during the Pokemon boom, I focused a lot on sealed products because I felt that a lot of raw cards were going way, way too high and there was opportunity for them to drop while sealed product would have the wave system on where you would be able to like evolving skies. You know, we were able to buy evolving skies for $99 in December of 2021. But now that same box went all the way up to almost $180. The next reprint comes and it drops back down to 140 and then goes back up to 160. So there's always the opportunity in sealed products to kind of play them waves as long as the hobby is strong and healthy and everything's moving in good directions. As long as we're seeing these shortages where it doesn't seem like there's enough product for people coming out, then there's definitely more ability for you to be able to ride some of the sealed product markets, especially with hype and FOMO, or if you get that monster chase card like we do with the Umbreon chasing the moon inside of Evolving Skies. There's a chase, people want it. Same thing with Brilliant Stars. I see some opportunities in Brilliant Stars. It's been a little bit slower, but I think it had a little bit heavy reprint at the beginning. And then, of course, all these nice alternate arts coming out in Astral Radiance, Pokemon Go, and now we got Lost Origins. Plus, we're coming into the end of Sword and Shield, so people's focuses aren't necessarily on Brilliant Stars right now. They're focusing on the next set or the last set of the Pokemon TCG with low or with not Pokemon TCG, but Sword and Shield with the whole Lugia set coming in Silver or um, Tempest. I can't remember the name of it every time I look it up and I forget it. But anyways, that set will be drawing people's attention. But I think people will come back to that trainer gallery. I think at the end of the day, the trainer gallery is going to be the driving factor in a lot of these new sets coming out. Um, of course, Lost Origins is going to have the giant Pikachu gallery inside of it, along with um, the Charizard with Leon, Leon inside or sitting in his lap. So I think that there's some great opportunity for chases in these sets. I think the Pikachus are really going to drive that that set really high. So once again, guys, this is what I wanted to just have a discussion. And then, of course, when we go down to it, we'll have an open discussion where we can open up new questions or add to this or elaborate or, you know, some moderation may happen at this point. This will be more of an organic point at this point, but I want to try and keep all of this series the same with the questions that I kind of put out there. And they'll be slightly modified from an LGS to owner to a, a, at home. So there'll be little modifications on the question, but relatively going to be similar just so everybody can, can kind of get a grasp on where they may want to go. Understand the different niches because it's funny that even though, I, this sealed collector, sealed collector, someone else may niche down to something very specific, such as ETBs only. And someone may be niching down to booster boxes only. Or someone may be something obscure that we're not even seeing or not really paying attention to. And that's the point of this, is that you can see a broad spectrum of people and what they are doing and how they are being successful in the Pokemon TCG and investing and how you might want to take things. How Maybe this is the direction you want to go and you never saw it. And this is a learning skill, guys. Now, the craziness is done. Things are moving a little bit slower. We, we're really not in huge rushes to do anything right now. Everything is kind of a patience game. Look at sun and moon for more grabs and more good things. Overall, I think that there is still some really good opportunities that'll be here in the near future, but you just have to be patient from the kind of fall in place, whether you wait for reprints or whether you're waiting for that market to climb back up with stuff that you're holding, depending on what it is. So once again, guys, I think that you should, you should really understand the markets and understand the different directions you could go, learn the different niches and see what works for you. And this will give you an opportunity to do that. So once again, if you're interested in, in Pokemon in, investing, if you're interested in Pokemon business, this series is going to be tailored to that, and hopefully it's something that you enjoy. Once again, we are going to have Dan from Catch'em All Collection Collectibles 
coming up next Wednesday. So he will be the first kickoff with another person in the series. And then, of course, we will work through, you know, Mason from Cardinal Gaming going into retro and also all the way into Pokemon DNA. Also, probably get some more people to fall in line or get excited about it and get some more content creators in here that are really specific to investing in business. And that way you guys can get their perspective on this and information. So hopefully, guys, this is some good information. Hopefully, this tells you a little bit about myself and it actually kind of builds what I do and why I do what I do. Gives you some, you know, costs to hours put in. So that way you can decide if maybe sealed product or raw cards is the direction you want to go. But if not, definitely keep up with the series. I will have a playlist down below with that all available to you. Um, if you go to my YouTube channel on the homepage, I will make sure that there is a playlist of all of these out there so that you can really dive in and watch this content and make decisions. So hopefully this was good for you. If it was, guys, hit that subscribe, hit that notify, and as always, hit that like button. If you do like this content, as always, check out these two videos over here. I will put them up for you afterwards for your information and education, and we will see you next time here on Northwoods TCG.